Well, hey, folks, uh, trying something new today, getting ready for what I'm going to do during the draft, and that's uh, I'll, I'll have some live reaction to what's going on with the draft, specifically with the Chiefs when they choose. I'll probably do one of these and just jump right on. But I'm doing a couple of presentations today, changing things up. We had some trouble getting the uh, the podcast part over on the other RGR channel going uh, with the draft and, and some of that. So this is just going to be a draft check-in today. A uh, couple of updates of what the Chiefs have done, what they're looking at, and so on and so forth. And I'll show you some of the metrics and some of the things that are really going to be important coming down when they do evaluations. I um, want to start with a little bit of news today, and that's because it, it all kind of feeds into the same thing. Chiefs signed uh, Keith Reeser back to the roster, um, a guy that's been in Kansas City before. And they really liked him until he got hurt last uh, last season. And He's had kind of a, a rough go, ended up signing with the AAF. And he, uh, as well as uh, Bosby, who's been in Chiefs camp before too, they were two of the guys that led the AAF in a lot of the production for the cornerback position. Um, so the Chiefs bring him back. I, I think it's um, one of the scenarios that really works for a developmental league. <clears throat> and that is that um, he's a guy generally uh, that we've seen what he can do. He, he's been in the league and has fallen out of it. Um, much like Richardson, Bosby, a, a bunch of people uh, in the AF that were having success have already been in the NFL. Um, and, and they know where they kind of stand there. But he was injured, and so that kind of puts a little asterisk on his situation. He goes out, <clears throat> signs with the AAF, plays out, plays well, um, has some impact, and puts back um, in a position where he can promote to the league, hey, you know, here's some good film. Here's what I did in the AAF, and I'm back. My injury has been rehabilitated. Uh, I can move again. And I think that's he's the, the shining case for how this should work uh, when a developmental league is really on the offing. Uh, and that's the, the other take uh, that we should probably talk about because the AAF is one thing that uh, really helps develop players. And I think it's, it's real unfortunate – because just to talk about the AAF for a minute, uh, I don't usually cover that on here, but I think we should because it's it's tied in. Uh, and it, it's too bad that the way that it went down because they got their funding pulled and they've now shut down uh, in terms of their actual operations. I think they're still alive as an entity and maybe they can find other funding to, to try to get back on um, some kind of playing field, which I, I'll have more thoughts about that down the line. But uh, initially... <sighs> There's two scenarios that that I think the, the developmental league is really good for, and I think that there needs to be one, and I hope that the AF can find a way back in some form or fashion because I don't think uh, the XFL is really looking to be a developmental league for the NFL. I think they want to be uh, their own entity. So um, the AF was really aiming at being a minor league for the NFL. They didn't want to be arena. They don't want to be XFL, and that's good because um, Reeser is, is that that case. A guy falls out of league for injury or some other reason and gets back in. The other thing that it really should be for is for those guys that never get a chance at the NFL. Those guys that play at super small schools and, and maybe they're good athletes and good players, but they need more coaching and they need some time to develop past, you know, 21 years old or whatever they are when, they, when they're out of college or they run out of eligibility. So that's what I think takes a year or two to get into. That's why I really want to see the AF come back in some form because – the product that the AAF put on the field was good. I don't think anybody had any qualms with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, ratings were there. I think the on-field play was there. The fans were getting into it. They had a good TV share. Um, the football portion of what they were doing, I think, was good. They, they fell apart on the backside on the business end. Um, and that happens sometimes when you have a bunch of football people trying to run a major business. Um, and you can put some of that blame on Eversol because he's the business type guy. But, you know, it, long story short, what they were doing football wise, I think, was working and it looked promising. I think it still does. And if it can come back, that'll be good because it takes a year or two to, to work out these wrinkles. And you, you'll get guys like uh, Bosby, uh, who I expect to sign again, like Reeser, who will show enough on that film from AAF to get brought back into the NFL and get another shot. Um, for the Chiefs specifically, they like him. I think he's he's good depth, but I, I don't think you want to start him again. I think that was pretty evident when he did start for this team. Uh, so 
don't don't read too much into that it's going to change the 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 way that they're going down the path they're still going to be looking for corners i don't think that's going to change at all but the other thing that it can do is for guys who, who didn't get their eligibility didn't play they can get on film and two years later after the guys that are going to go back in the nfl do it leaves you a little bit more room for those that you've never scouted or you never found for whatever reason uh, and then they can play at a developmental league level at the aaf and if they can put good film out then that's something that they can get their agents to push that film to the NFL. And they might get a shot at the NFL that they never would have had before. And I think that's really the, the key to being a developmental league. And something that will help the NFL is to get talent that they didn't scout before, that they didn't know was there before, or wasn't mature enough at the time physically to play the game. Um, and it, it'll give you kind of a secondary thing to pull from, not just the college ranks. So I think that's important overall. Um, I think the, the research signing, like I said, will be depth, and we'll see what happens after that. Um, if the AF comes back, you might see some more. Uh, I'll have stuff in the offseason about what they're doing and, and how they go about it, but uh, for right now, color me optimistic that they might still pull something else out. So uh, that said, the corner position is one that I think – I think I do have one pulled up here, and I'm going to share my screen with you guys in a couple of minutes. Uh, the reason I'm doing this format today is because I just haven't had time to turn on the lights and shoot video and do the edit and everything because the draft process is really kicking my butt. Um, I've been, I've been burning it at both ends and, uh, my draft guide is almost ready. It's all about athleticism, uh, with a little bit of production data thrown in there so you can see the correlation. Um, but it's about how athletes move, how their functional athleticism applies to the football field. Um, and I want to share some of that with you now because it's going to be something that's going to be big here in the next few weeks. And we'll shed some light on what teams are looking at, uh, not just the first rounders where their films should be ready to go. They should be starters. They should show enough in college that you can plug them in based visually on what you see they can do. After that, it starts to trail off and coachability and athleticism start to come up as you get into later rounds. And that's where this becomes uber, uber important. Um, and I want to share some with it. I, I'm learning this software, so bear with me here. But I'm going to switch the screen here and show you guys uh, what I'm developing here to share with you. And, and it's going to be in the guide. It'll be on Rogue APC here in a bit. But this is this is an example. Now, this is going to be over 200-page guide for all the positions, a bunch of, of players. And here's the overall. And what the matrix is is – looking at what the player needs to do in a given play and combining different pieces of athleticism that are measured at the combine in the pro day. It's not just about the 40. It's not just about a three cone for a pass rusher. There are, there are lots of bits and pieces about an individual play that go into it. And so you composite those. And I used to be a strength and conditioning coach. I, I'm an exercise physiologist by training. Uh, this is stuff that I've studied for a long, long time. And as I build these formulas over the years, now I'm starting to share them out in the world. And it gives you an idea of a player overall. Uh, and this is the first one, like this just happens to be the running backs. But like I said, it's it's all of the formations, all, all of the positions. Uh, and this lists everybody from top to bottom, how well they move laterally, how well they explode, uh, what kind of range they have in terms of downfield speed. And it wraps it all together. And this is the overall master matrix for uh, this running back class. And I'm giving you a preview here now that Justice Hill's at the top of it. And uh, old case stater Alex Barnes is, is right up there too. And you can see where some of them come through. Now, this isn't this isn't a strong running back class by any determination, but it is one uh, that offers some things uh, later down the line that you can probably grab on late second day, early third day. Somebody like Miles Gaskins, who's undersized, but really productive uh, and has the athleticism of, of a better back than what he shows in terms of how big he is. Uh, it's really, really intriguing. Uh, guys like James Williams that, that's going to be a third down back in the league that I think is going to be really productive, but he isn't a between the tackles, doesn't have a whole lot of power, so he doesn't rate very well in here. And you can see that that comparison. Um, likewise, when we get into the individual positions, like uh, a corner, one that came out in the middle, but a, a guy that I like over here from Notre Dame and Julian Love, and this shows you what I was talking about, all those comparisons. Short area quickness. This is one that is very, very important for basically everybody in the NFL. Whether you're an interior guard, 
or you're a corner left on an island. Being able to change directions is key. And that's what this matrix uh, combines and puts out on, on a single value for you. You can see that from his spider that uh, that's really his best trait. And, and that should help him shadow. It should help him play inside on the slot if he has to. Not necessarily something he's done a ton uh, in college, but something that athletically shows that he's capable of. Um, you also get some production here. I had just under an 80 passer rating against him. But you can see uh, between tackles for loss and, and missed tackles here in play production, uh, it's a little lopsided. But when you come over to targets a game, he got plenty of targets, and he was actually able to affect the ball. That's what the production stats tell you. Hawk rate is uh, interceptions and PBUs uh, versus how many times you were thrown at. So that's a significant metric to go along with all these athleticism ones that tell you, can he get downfield? Can he be a deep guy that can track all the way down the field with uh, you know a speedy receiver uh, versus somebody who is explosive off of the get-go? Now, explosion is really uh, initial burst. Uh, you know, the first three steps really is what it's trying to equate. And then you get farther into explosive range is, is out to 10 to 15 yards and then deep ranges beyond that. Now, another position that comes really heavily intrigued by athleticism is the edge rusher. We're going to look at Josh Allen here from Kentucky. And this is a, really what you see on film is a little bit deceptive when you look at what he can do physically. And this helps you tailor like what team could actually fit and use him to the most of his ability in a way that, that works for their defense. Uh, tackle for loss rate is, is a good one here for him. Uh, and this is how many plays, not just sacks, but how many plays behind the line of scrimmage does he make? That's really important. You get your pressures per snap in here, and that's – that's one that you got to know if a guy's playing 30 snaps and this is his average in, through his college career is a pressure every six snaps. That's pretty good. So that's something that you want to look at. Now, he's got things that are very specific to his game. He does play with some power and he has some short area quickness. You've seen him be bursty, right? His first step is good and he could turn the corner. And that's what this shows. It's not so much that he is the most explosive player. He has good timing off of his technique, and he understands what the offense is trying to do. He can read a tackle, and that helps him get to his bend, which is what that short area quickness shows you. Now, other players would look differently, but that's the guy that I want to show you today, and it gives you an idea of what the guide's going to look like. It's going to be out here in the next few days, so keep an eye out for that, and I think you guys are going to like it. It's, it's newly available to the public. It's not, uh, you know, I put it out a couple of seasons, but now it's really starting to take shape. So I'm excited about it. I think it'll give you an idea of, particularly when you look at what the Chiefs want to do in their athleticism, how they want to apply that to their defense. I think it gives you an idea how you can match up what we've seen so far, especially in the, the players they've chosen to sign for this Magnolia defense. Uh, it can really help you find some of that out. And as you go through the draft, it'll definitely be helpful. So I just wanted to take a little time today, explain all that, and touch on all this process that's going in. Um, not going to do the draft podcast on the other channel anymore. I'll probably just do this. Um, and until I get back to where I can actually do film study and everything, probably be post-draft, look for these and maybe a little bit of, a, of actual video shot as we go along. Um, but let me know what you want to know. Hit the comments below and tell me, you know, players specifically or process that you're interested in about the draft. And I'll do my best to, to answer those as we go along. So just wanted to give you a Friday update. Uh, this should go up here pretty soon. So uh, thanks for your time. Let me know if you like this format and if I should keep doing this uh, in a way that's helpful. And uh, have a great weekend.